Hi Year 6, this week's instalment of the jam donut that ruined my life. Mrs Ross had just got up to the bit where Gamble has eaten some roadkill. Ugh. I could hear Mum over the line asking to speak to me. Gamble seemed to weigh this up for a few seconds. Nah, he said, then he hung up on her. I was about to say that this was pretty rude when his face lit up. Look, here comes the bus. A normal person stops a bus by putting out their hand. Gamble's method was a little bit, well, different. Just as the bus was coming past at full pelt, he leapt out into the middle of the road in front of it, screaming and waving his arms around. I could see the panic in the driver's eyes. He slammed on his brakes, screeching to a halt inches in front of Gamble. About a second later, a tiny dog crashed against the inside of the windscreen and slithered down it, legs spread wide against the glass. Cool, said Gamble. He skipped round and hopped up through the open doors. What is wrong with your brain? snarled the driver. He seemed pretty angry. Gamble ignored the question. I think he'd probably have been asked it before. You shouldn't have braked so hard, he said. Look at that poor dog. The tiny dog was drunkenly staggering round in circles on the floor. An extremely old woman scooped it up and gave Gamble a dirty look. Gamble grinned at her. Probably best to keep a hold of that lead, he said. The old woman said something extraordinarily rude. I'd never heard a woman in her 80s swear before then. I guess that's the effect Gamble has on people. Hurry up and pay your fare or I'll kick you off, said the driver. I'm really sorry, but we don't have any money, I said. Gamble pulled a £20 note out of his pocket. Where did you get that? I said. Saw Mrs MacDonald put it in her desk, so I nicked it at playtime, innit? He said, as though this was a normal thing to do. I tried to figure out if this was wrong or not. I mean, I knew it was wrong, but it was my £20 note and we were going to use it to get the donuts as planned. Maybe it wasn't totally wrong. I don't give change, said the driver. Doesn't matter, said Gamble, poking the 20 quid into the slot. On buses round here, you put your money straight into a machine and it drops down into the safe. Yes, it does, I cried. We need that. It was too late. The driver had already pressed the button. There was a cha-ching sound. The money dropped out of the glass slot and disappeared. Oh yeah, said Gamble. I forgot. The tickets were printed and the doors closed. The other people on there, mainly old, looked just as cross as the lady with the dog. A couple of them were picking themselves up off the floor. A handbag had spilled all the way down the aisle, sending boiled sweets and loose change rolling everywhere. Gamble didn't seem to notice. And how are we supposed to get the doughnuts now? I asked him as we sat down. No problem, said Gamble. There's always begging or the five finger discount. The what? I said. I didn't like the sound of this. Gamble wiggled his fingers in the air. You know, shoplifting. I do it all the time. He said this cheerfully like it was nothing out of the ordinary. I've got loads of hobbies. I could imagine him saying skateboarding, cricket, shoplifting, murdering dolphins, you know, all the usual stuff. I turned my back on him, hunched my shoulders and put my head against the cold window. If I hadn't tried to eat the deadly donut on Monday, I wouldn't be mates with Gamble. I wouldn't have a girlfriend who was hassling me. I wouldn't own, own minus 52 donuts and I wouldn't be about to launch myself into a life of crime. Surely the deadly donut couldn't cause me any more problems, could it? I think we all know the answer to that one. The chance of a lifetime. When we reached the supermarket, the good news was that we didn't need to beg or steal. The bad news was that things turned out much, much worse. As soon as we got off the bus, Gamble spotted Miss Clegg pushing her trolley into the shop. Miss Clegg! he screamed. Can we sit in your trolley, miss? Can you push us round, miss? Miss! Miss! I've never seen the face that people pull when they find out the hard way that a cat has gone to the toilet in their shoe. However, I'm guessing it's pretty similar to the face Miss Cle Clegg pulled when she saw Gamble bounding towards her. With surprising speed, she zipped off into the shop, slaloming in and out of other shoppers until she was out of sight. Mustn't have heard me, said Gamble as he wandered back. I said nothing. Just as Gamble reached me, a young man with slicked back hair and a shiny suit stepped between us. He had a dark orange fake tan and a huge grin that showed off his dazzlingly white teeth. Congratulations, he said, putting a hand on Gamble's shoulder. In his other hand, he was holding a camcorder. A young woman appeared next to him. She was also smartly dressed and was pushing a trolley with balloons attached to it. 
You're our 1,000th customer today, she beamed. Really? I said. I tried to work out how likely this was. In the last 30 seconds, around 40 people had gone into the store. If it had been open since 6am, then that would mean at least... Gamble interrupted my thoughts. Would we win? he said. The young man's smile was still fixed on his face. Well, he said, your incredible prize is... A trolley dash for you and your friend here. Oh, brilliant, said Gamble, bouncing about excitedly. Er, uh, what's one of them? You have five minutes, said the woman, pulling a stopwatch out of her pocket. Run inside, fill this trolley with as much stuff as you can and get back here before the time runs out. If you make it back in time, you keep everything in the trolley for free. Wow, said Gamble. Are you sure this is for real? I said, frowning. On close inspection, the man and woman only looked about 17 and they weren't wearing badges or anything. For the first time, the man's smile cracked a bit. Hey, hey, would we be allowed to stand here if it wasn't? Hmm, I guess not, I said. It was a pretty good point. Don't throw away the chance of a lifetime, said the woman. This was another good point. Your time starts now. She pushed a button on the stopwatch, and before I could stop him, Gamble was sprinting off into the shop with a trolley. If I was you, I'd go too, said the man, pointing the camcorder at Gamble's back. Otherwise, I'll only fill it with things that he wants. This was the best point of all. Now, part of me did think that this was too good to be true, but we were desperate, and I wanted to believe that my luck had changed. And I can imagine Gamble stuffing the trolley with rat poison, worm medicine for dogs, and flammable household cleaning products. What did I have to lose? I took a deep breath and ran after him. For two minutes, I searched up and down the store, but Gamble was nowhere to be found. Time was ticking away, so I decided to change my tactics. I'd go straight to the donuts, grab as many as I could, and then find him. Luckily, it was the supermarket where Mum does the family shop, so I knew my way round. Within, min- within a minute, I was standing on my favourite aisle. The cake aisle. The cake aisle at the supermarket is amazing. It's kind of like how I imagined heaven to be. There are millions of different cakes. Swiss rolls, chocolate party cakes, jam tarts. Best of all, though, there's the biggest squidgy splodge donut cabinet you have ever seen. It's about five metres long and it's beautiful. It has a huge lit up sign above it and three warm shelves absolutely bursting with every squidgy splodge flavour there is. My tongue was hanging out as I let my eyes drift across the glistening rows of glorious treats. Plain glazed ring, an excellent beginner's donut, but not for the expert. Choco vanilla dream ring with nut sprinkles, perfect for a birthday party, but not suitable for everyday use. Banoffee bad boy, chocolate, toffee, crushed biscuit, banana and cream, a truly excellent all-rounder, and it contains fruit, so it's perfect for athletes and anyone watching their weight. Lemon curd, a revolting lump of pure disappointment. Raspberry jam, the greatest donut of them all, the Ferrari of deep fried doughy treats. And then I saw them sitting there on a shelf in a great big mountain of loveliness. I pressed my face against the glass and examined them longingly. It had been so long since I'd last tasted one. I felt like I'd been lost in a desert and had finally found water. All I wanted to do was shove my head inside the cabinet and stuff myself until my stomach exploded. This wouldn't help me in the long run, though, so I had to control myself. There was no time to count them. I just needed to get as many as I could. I gathered up a load of trays and boxes filled with donuts and stacked them on the floor. Then, when there were more than I could carry, I shoved loose donuts into my rucksack, up my jumper and into every single pocket. A lady frowned at me as she ambled along the aisle, but I ignored her. There wasn't time to explain. I picked up the pile of boxes, trying not to squash the doughnuts under my clothes, and staggered off to find Gamble. There must have been about six boxes in my arms, and I could barely see over the top of them. The sugar and oil were hot against my skin, but I didn't care anymore. I was desperate, and it would be worth it. I didn't notice that the frowning lady was following me. Code Red Emergency I had been up and down about six aisles with no sign of Gamble when an announcement came over the loudspeakers. All security staff to check out for code red emergency. This could only mean one thing, gamble. My heart pounding, I rushed there as quickly as I could. 
At checkout four, everything was going nuts. The assistant was screaming. There were security guards piling in from every direction. The trolley with the balloon on it was off to one to the side, absolutely stacked full of iPads, mobile phones and games consoles. I'm not joking. There must have been about £10,000 worth of stuff in there. But that wasn't the worst thing. Good grief, I said. Gamble was standing on top of the conveyor belt, crushing a bunch of bananas and a couple of vanilla slices beneath his shoes. Teeth gritted and eyes wild, he was attempting to wrench the till off the desk. The till, for heaven's sake. I mean, they'd said we could put anything into our trolley, but surely that wasn't included. Included. I had to admire his guts, but it was a bit much. It was like going to an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet and trying to eat the waiter's leg. The security guards couldn't get at him because the checkout was blocked with trolleys. In the background, the man and woman from outside were grinning and filming him on their camcorder. Unfortunately for Gamble, the till seemed to be bolted in place, so he started slapping the buttons until eventually the drawer flew open. Just as he began shoving fistful, fistfuls of banknotes into his pockets, a huge security guard fought his way through and dragged him off the conveyor belt. Gamble was flipped onto the guard's shoulder and carried off, kicking and yelling. Leave me alone, Gamble screamed, ten pound notes fluttering everywhere as the guard stomped off down the shop. I'm on a trolley dash, you're wasting my time. A few customers scrabbled on the floor for the dropped banknotes while the other security guards tried to stop them. I looked over at the man and a woman with the camcorder. They were filming me now. The woman pointed at her watch. 30 seconds left, she mouthed. I felt really bad for Gamble. What would they do to him? There'd obviously been a misunderstanding. The last thing I heard him shout as he disappeared through a door was, Get to the front of the shop, Roman, quickly! I really wanted to help him, but what could I do? If I didn't get back before the time ran out, we wouldn't win anything. Gamble would be furious if he didn't get his prize. And what about the donuts? This was our only hope. I could always try and help Gamble afterwards. Gathering up the donuts and tipping them into Gamble's abandoned trolley, I set off. I hadn't taken three steps before I felt a firm hand on my shoulder. Store detective, said a strict sounding woman's voice. Security, we've got ourselves another one. I spun round. It was a lady who'd frowned at me on the cake aisle. Suddenly I found, found myself face to face, well okay, face to stomach, with three enormous security guards. Caught him red-handed, emptying out the squidgy splodge cabinet earlier, said the store detective. Empty your pockets. But, I started, now, she snapped. Reluctantly, I did as I was told. As I dropped the last donut into the trolley, the shop manager pushed his way to the front. He was a short, round man with a red face and a bald head. Unbelievable. Shove him in the holding room with the other one and call the police. I want a trolley dash, I protested. Oh, that old one, snapped the manager. I've heard it all before. Honestly, I'm with my friend who was on the thousandth, who was the thousandth com customer, I explained. We won a trolley dash. You can ask those people over there. When I looked over, though, the man and a woman had disappeared. Save it for the coppers, said the manager. Two enormous hands were hooked under my armpits and I was led away from the trolley. But we hadn't gone far when a sleepy sounding voice said, Er, uh, where do you think you're taking him? The guards stopped. We all turned round. Miss Clegg was standing there with her trolley. I couldn't help but notice that it was filled with toilet rolls and small boxes of something called windbreak. Tablets for the control of flatulence. What's it to do with you? said one of the security guards. Well, oh, yawned Miss Clegg. He hasn't stolen anything, has he? I mean, unless he gets to the door. You don't know that he's not going to pay for it all. The guards loosened their grip on me. Um, <clears throat> said one, scratching his head. Well, um, said the other. Miss Clegg took a step for towards me and placed her hand on my arm. For all you know, he might have been getting his stuff for me. So you should let him go. One of the guards began massaging his neck. The other started moving imaginary dust around the floor with his foot. Finally, the manager stepped forward and snapped. Right, get out of here and don't come back. You're barred. How will I get my donuts? I cried. This was awful, like being banned from living. You've got five seconds to leave your own, on your own accord or I call the police, growled the manager. I definitely didn't want to be arrested. Maybe I could come back in disguise or something. I quickly thanked Miss Clegg for helping me. I was going to do the same for Darren, she said. But then again, and I've got to leave it there. I hope you're really enjoying the book and I will see you all soon. Bye.